What is the role of religion in our ever-changing world? From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Issues of Faith. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Issues of Faith. Glad you're with us. Fascinating topic today. We're talking about will there be a great resignation when it comes to pastors? We've certainly heard about that in context with other professions. What about the very difficult job of leading a church? Happy to have with us Professor James Hudnut Boimler um, at Vanderbilt University, former dean of the Divinity School there, and you've been on the show a few yeah. years ago. It's great so, to be back. Thank you for coming on. All right, this issue. We, we, we've talked about it. There was a recent survey out that indicated there could be a mass exodus of pastors as a result of COVID and, and everything else. W what, what do you think? So what I think is that the, uh, the, the rumor that there would be half of all uh, senior pastors resigning within uh, 10 months or two years or something like that, I've seen the same surveys, uh, was a little bit overblown, but there has been a significant... Uh, resignation. Uh, uh, there have been people who've rethought their retirement plans and accelerated them. There are people who did burn out and uh, clergy burnout is a is a, a continuing problem in the ministry. It's a hard job. What specifically, and I bet I could name some of them, but what were the things that, that pastors focused on as causing those great problems in the in the last couple of years? Sure. Well, uh, let's let's take something that was already happening to ministers. Uh, I grew up as a minister's kid, and uh, a crisis in our family life was when the phone rang during dinner. Does dad take it? Of course dad takes it. It's the 1960s. There are no, uh, there's no voicemail. Uh, so that was a thing. However, uh, you could only back then take one call at a time. You couldn't get a bunch of texts, emails, uh, landline and and other line and during the pandemic pastors were were faced with uh, lots of information coming in and no more time in the day than ever before and the inability to go out and do the thing that brought them uh, into the ministry which is to relate to people one-on-one -on -one or in small groups or on the Sabbath in uh, in a worship setting so a lot of the goodies went away and a lot of the difficulties uh, intensified and remained. I, when I look at these numbers about, you know, people that thought about leaving, it says many of the pastors that thought about leaving were coming from smaller churches, churches that maybe had 100 to 250 people attending on Sundays, even before the pandemic. Right. Do you think that's, that's accurate? I mean, I'm sure the pandemic was hard on these mega churches too, but the people that were really thinking about leaving, and, and have we seen that, people leaving these smaller churches? Well, at a large, at a large membership church, you have other colleagues uh, that can, can be part of your team, and at least you're sharing the work together. My wife uh, is an associate pastor at, at a church here in Nashville that's like that. And it's good to be able to carry each other's burdens. The pastor of a 100-member church up to about 250 is probably uh, the only ordained staff member. There might be a musician, a, 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 you know, somebody who cuts the grass, but uh, it's not quite the same. And then the other thing is every question, every decision was questioned during this pandemic right. in a way that they didn't see before, right? I mean, just having service suddenly became a polarizing question, and that's got to be difficult. Yeah, and, and what do we change to go online? How long do we stay online? Some people love online. Some people say, let's cut off the online. So, so and masks. Uh, you know, who wears the mask? Uh, does the choir wear the mask? Uh, we can't hear the choir. You know, people had lots of opinions that, that made this particular uh, health, prolonged health crisis, also a bit of a, a community crisis for a lot of our churches. And I would reckon that pretty much every church had at least some dissenter, if not a deep division on the whole issue of uh, masking and, and other kinds of uh, related issues. And so when you talk to pastors, do you feel like we're coming out on the other side of it? Or is there still 
lots of pressure and difficulty around this. You know, this, this was a very special Easter because pretty much everybody uh, in your viewing area here uh, was back to having Easter in person. Uh, one of the upsides uh, of, of the whole pandemic was a lot of churches leveraged their ability uh, to, to live stream and, and now can reach church members uh, who for mobility reasons or, or illness reasons can't come to church. So there, there was a plus there, but it was really great, even if, uh, like in my church, the choir was still masked and some people were uh, uh, voluntarily masked, uh, they were there for Easter in a way that they were outside for the last Easter and online for the Easter before. And so it was a very sort of special uh, moment and the fact that we're looking at, at low COVID numbers uh, is, is calming the waters. That's a good point. Easter was, was great. Easter was special. It was back to getting, it was getting back to normal. Yeah. And, and you said, yeah, when this report, there was a report that came out that said 40% of pastors were considering resigning, essentially 40%. And you said, okay, it may, it's not going to be that bad. Um, we might be past that. Is that essentially what you're saying? It won't be. It won't be as bad as feared, but there's what? So what? What's left behind is um, is trauma. Maybe too strong a word, but uh, all the rough stuff you went through, uh, deciding about masking, deciding about live streaming, uh, managing funerals that had to be outdoors uh, rather than loving and hugging on people. Uh, all of that stuff leaves uh, some scars that will take some time to get over for pastors and for churches, for leaders, deacons and elders and what have you. And, and so churches. bigger picture, where does this lead the health of religion, of, of congregations as we come out of the pandemic? The, you know, the, so they're returning now. Maybe the, the numbers aren't as big. I hear giving in many cases was solid. Giving sustained. This you know, one thing that I, I study is uh, philanthropy and religion, and uh, it was amazing that the uh, giving held up. Uh, it wasn't like you could go on a vacation or a cruise or something. So, uh, and people uh, who already valued their churches continued to value their churches. Um, so that held up. Uh, whether people will come back consistently in the kinds of numbers. Uh, my mother-in-law said, I think people have lost the church habit. Uh, nevertheless, uh, because she's a snowbird, she was actually attending church twice during the whole community, uh, whole pandemic, you know, once in Minnesota and once in Arizona. So I, I don't know where we're going with this. Uh, people were glad to be back at Easter. People will be glad to be back uh, with their small groups and, and things like that are already doing those kinds of things. Uh, but we'll see in the long run what the effect is. And I'm going to ask you more after the break about philanthropy mm -hmm. and churches. I think that's fascinating. But this issue with burnout has always been a concern for pastors. I mean, forget about the pandemic, right? Sure. How big of a concern is that just, just for those doing the job before the pandemic? Yeah. So, um, there's a lot of study of burnout because it's been an a endemic problem. You have a pastor uh, who, who everybody loves uh, and then she or he is, is suddenly resigning and the congregation is, is, is left saying why. And if, if you probe that and, and people have studied it, uh, it turns out they were isolated or lonely in the work. It's not that they didn't love uh, all of us uh, church members, it's, it's that um, they didn't have enough besides their work to sustain them or in the midst of a conflict and conflicts come over all kinds of different things, they didn't have a posse uh, of people, other pastors um, who they could talk to and, and pray for and sustain one another. And um, that's, that's the biggest uh, thing you can do to so avoid Van the burnout. Yeah, at Vanderbilt Divinity School, what do you tell pastors? So I work with the Presbyterians, somebody else works with the Methodists, somebody else works on down the line. 
Uh, and, and what I say is that uh, uh, this man, Richard Miller, discovered people needed friends in ministry. And the best way to sustain a life in, in ministry is to have friends in ministry, other pastors, people who care about you, uh, who aren't voting on your salary or criticizing your sermons. They, they just love you for you. In other words, have friends outside the church. Correct. Outside the church where you're pastor. Yeah, everybody needs friends outside work to discuss work matters. Uh, the, the pastorate can be so all-consuming that you spend all your time in one congregation and then uh, don't have enough uh, resilience when you need it. What would you recommend, say, there's people watching that love their pastor, or concerned about their pastor? What, what can people in a church do for a pastor? Uh, so, if there's a day off, respect that day off. Um, you know, there's, there's some people who will, who will call you just to make, you know, make sure they, you still know that they're there. Uh, you know, curb, curb your enthusiasm uh, for reaching out to the pastor on, on the day off or during vacation. Uh, realize that other people uh, besides your favorite pastor can, might be able to help you. Um, and then I think maybe the most important thing is, is uh, to say thank you in a variety of ways so that somebody knows that they aren't just casting their bread on the water and seeing if it, it gets taken. Another area you're studying, religion and philanthropy. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a break, come back, discuss that. Take a break, be back right after this.